Hello and welcome to this meeting of um, Tamworth Borough Council Cabinet on the 16th of September 2024. Can I please remind members that the meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, I have apologies from councillors Daniel and Arkney. Do we have any other apologies? No, thank you. Item two are the minutes of the previous meetings held on the 8th of August and the 29th of August. They're here for your approval. Can I request a mover and a seconder, please? Everyone in favour? Thank you. Item three, declarations of interest. Are there any matters that anyone wants to declare an interest? Question time. Sorry. We have one question from a member of the public, Mr. Hugh Loxton. And if you would like to read your question out, you. Thank you. <clears throat> At the corporate scrutiny meeting on the 5th of September, both yourself and the portfolio holder, Councillor Smith, made it very clear you felt the Tamworth Information Centre in the Assembly Rooms is an unsuitable venue for residents to go with council inquiries. Could you therefore please explain why you intend to continue offering the full customer service offer from this venue, alongside the planned reopening of a council reception at Marmion House? Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Um, so in answer to your question, yes, we did say that the facility would still remain at um, the TIC. And the primary function of the front-facing customer services at TIC, they will continue to be delivering delivered at the box office and information centre services. However, our goal is to resolve inquiries at the first point of contact. Therefore, the same trained officers will answer questions and support residents wherever they visit. So those, those officers will be in both um, the TIC and at the new front desk. Um, it's acknowledged that for certain types of inquiries, the TIC venue has been unsuitable due to its open space and very limited private areas. And in such cases, Marmion House offers a more suitable environment. This approach enhances the service by offering a broader range of options and opening hours. The Assembly Rooms location is a sensible choice for continuing to provide information centre services such as bus passes, parking permits, seasonal trails, local information and guides. And this is especially relevant given the ongoing regeneration work and anticipated changes in footfall. The, the thing I would say is it's not an either or. So we will have the two um, venues open, but the, what we want to see at the Marmion House site is where people can have those private meetings and it's a more acceptable place for people with different kinds of queries. But because the TIC will be open anyway, there is no point not having that staff element there that can respond if that's where people go to in the first instance. So can I come back now, yeah? Councillor Smith invited people here tonight if they didn't agree with the decision to come and speak against it. So I hope you'll allow me or indulge me some time just to make a few points, having read the documents tonight. I know that might not be normal, but I hope you will allow me to do that. So I personally, what, what you said to Councillor Jay at the corporate scrutiny, sorry, Councillor Dean, what you said, um, I just don't understand why you would think having two buildings open at the same time is a good use of money and office of time. You're now going to have a two-tier system, if you like, where Marmion House is open at the same time as the Assembly Rooms. The Assembly Rooms is open for 36 hours a week. Excuse me, Mr Loxon, sorry. Yeah. Um, Councillor Dean, really, this should be a question. There will be a question at the this. end. I'm just trying to get some points across to get to that question. That's up to the chair, then. Yeah. So, Marmion House is... Sorry, the TIC is going to be open for 36 hours a week. Marmion House is going to be open for 20 hours a week. There'll be 12 hours, I think, when only the assembly rooms is open. So you're going to have two tiers. Someone coming into the TIC is going to get a worse level of service by your own admission than someone coming to the assembly rooms. So that's the first thing. Most of the building won't be used at Marmion House. You're going to use, I would think, two floors maximum. It's a nine-floor building. 
there must be more suitable smaller buildings and there's others becoming available all the time. You say it's going to be a banking model. NatWest is available in the town centre. Barclays is available. And the Halifax is about to close down, so that will be available. Three or four years ago, I'd have possibly agreed with what you're saying. And again, you've said we've taken this step after, list, step after listening to residents over the past few years. Like I say, three or four years ago, I would have agreed with you but times have changed, the way we all go around our work and business has changed. Now, in December 23, I'm getting to the question now. <laughs> in December 2023, I watched a councillor's meeting. Now, admittedly, that was a planning application, so it's very different. But I watched and I thought, this is a terrible decision that you are making. Subsequently, that decision has cost the council and therefore the taxpayer tens of thousands of pounds and the council were found to have acted with unreasonable behaviour. The decision to get rid of Marmion House was made by 30 councillors. You're now going to overturn that decision with four of you, because that decision was made at full council. The public haven't been engaged in this. We haven't been asked our opinion at all. I'm on the Tamworth residents um, group, and we haven't been engaged, the citizen panel. So what I'm going to ask is for you to defer this decision tonight for a period of six months to do a full engagement with the public and other stakeholders and to give all 30 councillors an opportunity to have their say at a future meeting. Thank you. Thank you for those comments and I know I can appreciate where you're coming from but in answer to that, I would say we've consulted quite widely. We have continuously, every time we go out and speak to people on the doorstep, they want to see those front-facing services back in Marmion House. And only today at the Tenants' Participation um, Conference, when they were told about the plans for Marmion House, the people gave a round of applause about it. There, there is a real appetite for this to happen. I understand your, your um, concerns about the, the whole building, the Marmion House building, and those plans were made to, to decommission it a while ago, but there was never any plans in place for what the, the council were actually going to do, where their forever home was going to be. There was only some plans for interim um, office space, which would have cost an awful lot of money, much more than we're spending on opening um, the, the front desk up. As I say, this is something we have been asked continually, and it's, it's something that our whole group are committed to do, because this was one of our manifesto pledges. So we, we will be carrying on with the meeting, and we will take this through as arranged. So item five are matters referred to the cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedure rules. There are none of those, yes. <laughs> and item six then, Marmion House reception and committee meetings. So we go on to that report, item six. And the purpose of this report um, is for the reopening of re reception at Marmion House and the steps needed to make this area fit for purpose for our customers once again. The report also proposes to relocate all committee meetings from the Town Hall to the Council Chamber at Marmion House. The report proposes to update audiovisual technology to enhance meeting delivery and undertake minor refurbish refurbishment work to the current chamber. Before I pass over to my colleagues, um, i just like your indulgence to make a little statement because, as I say, this is something that we've talked about and worked towards for so long. So, that said, my, my statement is that I'm so proud to be presenting this item to Cabinet and once again, <laughs> this might upset some that I keep quoting from the Reverend Sermons, but Reverend Lithell on Sunday, part of his sermon said, we are called to stand up for what we believe in. And this is the policy that the T Labour group totally believe in. 
and it confirmed for me that we need to have the confidence in the decisions we're making and the reasons for those decisions. As we've highlighted many times before, we've been asked by residents time and time again for a front-facing front customer services provision that works for everyone. This is what we see in this proposal. The document you have in front of you outlines in detail the vision for reopening the front desk at Marmion House and the relocating of meetings back into the Marmion House Council Chamber. I'm sure Councillor Smith will be able to put forward all the financial justifications for this, but I'd just like to remind you of the comments that I made at the scrutiny meeting regarding both proposals. The facility for customers that we have at the Assembly Rooms, we do not consider to be wholly appropriate for our customers because of the lack of privacy and the fact that there are still some customers who go to Marmion House looking for that service. So Marmion House is there. There are no concrete plans, pardon the pun, that have been put forward in place to either sell or exit the building. So why would we not use it? And my thoughts about using our wonderful historic town hall that we're in now as an extra committee room are also well rehearsed. We're heating two buildings. We're having staff have to come over to another building. There's a time factor here, which I've fallen foul of a few times, trying to get from late afternoon meetings in Marmion House to the town hall. And probably the most important thing for the town hall for me is what is the appropriate use for a building like this with all its his history, especially when we are looking at what our vision for the town should be. Surely that should have a large historical element with the town hall being part of the heritage offer of the town. Thank you. Has anybody got any points, questions? Dave. Yeah, I've got. <coughs> excuse me. I've got a couple of things that I'd just like to bring up uh, with. Well, with my two hats actually. The first hat is the sustainability um, issues. Now, um, in the report, it says the reopening um, as an additional front door would have an impact on the environmental performance. Um, um, but um, surely we must, given the given the amount of money we're actually saving on you know redeveloping and, and not doing all the stuff that we have to do or we're going to do at the town hall surely there must be some potential um way to mitigate that uh, loss of heat or i presume it's heat i can't think of anything else um that would um enable um the the, the customer service part uh, at, at the marmion house to be uh, mitigated so i'd like uh, somebody to perhaps have a look at that to look at maybe the design to just to see if there is a way to to um to uh negate that that additional loss because we are in the process of 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 um auditing all our buildings in um in, in our in our portfolio to try and make them as sustainable as possible with our commitment to net zero so i think we should certainly have a look at that one thing it, the, the, this actually doesn't make clear although um, I think it should, it is that um, the uh, sustainability issue uh, must be better if, if we, when we move the uh, the general meetings, our meetings from the, from the town hall here across to Marmion, ha Marmion House, because I, I, I can only think that Marmion House, the, the um, environmental sustainability of it has got to be much higher and better than this old building. So I think those are two things we need to add into into this. One to look at look at um, the that issue about the front door, and the second one is to um, to um, understand what the um, potential upside in terms of sustainability and what we're adding to our to our you know our, our gain in time in terms of heating loss etc. Yeah, that's. Do you want me to carry on or? <laughs> Yeah, I think, well, I would yeah, put those forward, would yeah. yeah. Um, and the other thing is, uh, there's no real mention of, um, this is with my new health and safety hat on, there's no, and there's nothing in this report that actually underlines the fact that uh, on a health and safety uh, um, issue, um, Marmion House must be, must be a considerably better option 
than sitting in here with all these trailing wires and people out plugging their laptops in and, and all this stuff. In terms of just exit, exiting the building, if we do, for you know, for whatever, have an emergency, um, with a full council in here and, you know, members of the public, yet there's only one way out of this building. So the, on a health and safety issue alone, there must be a big issue in terms of, uh, of driver to get us out of this building for, you know, our general meetings. Thank you. Um, yes, from a health and safety perspective, um, we have long recognised that the um, the audiovisual in here does present us with some issues. Hence, um, the work that's been going on to quote for um, and uh, the companies have put tenders in for uh, the chamber at Marmion. That is actually um, safety is. Of paramount. I was talking to um, some members earlier about the height of screens in, in the chamber. So all of that has been taken into account, absolutely. Brilliant. And in terms of the reception, um, safety was the primary reason for the proposals for the refurbishment as well, to make sure that we've brought things up to the 2024 safety standards. Thank you. Got another okay. yeah. <clears throat> so um, it was great. It's nice to see that there's actually um, some mention of a comms plan. You know, from my point of view, getting this comms plan right and making sure the public understands where they've got to go to to get these sorts of services is critical to making this a successful failure. So I really would like to see some um, sight of that comms plan as soon as possible so we can look at it and make suggestions and make sure that we're actually going to get the message out to our residents, yeah, that this service is, is being made available to them, yeah, um, and it's giving them the option for a face to face consultation. Which, I mean, I've worked in IT all my life, yeah, and IT is great if it's if it's um if if it's a single thing, but if it's a, if it's multiple things with a problem with multiple facets, then IT just don't doesn't give you that capability so i mean we we need to make sure that we've got the comms plan right and that we're making uh, as much noise about it to to the to our residents as possible because a lot of people although we're in a, in a you know a, a you know a new world of it and whatever a lot of people just still do not want to you know do that thing over the <coughs> over the internet or whatever it is yeah or over the phone so in terms of in terms of what I would like to do or like to see is that comms plan up before us as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, work has already started on the communication subject to approvals today. There's um, work is ready to go out there to actually start to tell the public um, what we're doing, and the full comms plan will be developed subject to um, the decision today, but we, that is a real key part of this because we know that previously when the doors were shut and we did open the assembly rooms that that did take a little bit of time to get out to the public. So it's a key feature of the work that we're going to be doing. Any more comments, Ben? Yeah, just with the, my portfolio hat on following the attendance conference today, this is a really exciting proposal and my sort of like mind is running amok of like what sort of housing services we could run from from Armin House and, and restore that face to face and um, restoring that trust with people. I did have a question for either Councillor Smith or, or Zoe. Um, there's been a lot of misinformation about the finances around this. I just wonder whether you could um, provide us with some clarification. I know we've got the report, but for the benefit of the people watching from home, as we know there are many. Um, give us some clarification on that would be really cool yeah of course um i've been making some comments on facebook myself about uh, some misinformation which has been put out so yeah it'd be good to address it uh, now so in regards to the costings at the front desk as it says in the report it's fifty thousand, just under fifty thousand, to refurbish the building the reception itself um ten thousand being placed on it infrastructure and 20,000 on ancillary costs. Uh, in regard to staffing, it's just under £60,000 a year with the plans which we have put in place for three days a week at 10 until 2pm and then two days a week at 2 until 6pm. 
um, those staffing costs, regardless of where we put, end up putting the front desk, will be the same. If we were to open up a shop in Ankerside tomorrow, those £60,000 uh, staff costings would be the same um, in regard to that. So in regard to the committee chamber as well, IT is going to be the most expensive cost of it. However, the tech that we use for meetings, the mic I'm speaking into now, is over a decade old and they need renewing. So this would take place regardless of where we have the committee chamber. So a large cost will be on renewing the tech. Um, it's a big complaint which we see all over social media. It's a complaint we have when people are in the committee um, chamber themselves that they can't hear people they can't see people when they're watching the meetings etc and also we just we do need a replacement of this tech um in regard to the council chamber and its refurbishment the costing was will be around 25 to thirty thousand pound um, and that will utilize the chamber we already have uh, that will take in consideration health and safety so new lighting um replacement of the carpets which has got holes in it from previous chairs which were nailed into place uh, etc um, so in regard to the council chamber if we're ignoring IT costs because they would happen regardless of whether we're using the town hall as a committee chamber or going back into the council chamber um, moving on from that um, it'll be 25,000 30,000 to refurbish the council chamber um, the costs for the plans to refurbish the town hall stood at around 688,000 that is to make the town hall a committee chamber itself um, Myself and uh, Councillor Dean have mentioned uh, several times about how we can look to use the Town Hall for alternative purposes if we um, are to vote to agree tonight to move the Council Chamber from here to, um, to the um, Marmion House. However, £688,000 to refurbish the Town Hall just so we can hold our meetings in it, regardless of looking at it from any other perspective, it's not efficient use of Council money. Costings in regards to other buildings as well. Costings for other buildings previously, when, when they've been looked, to, looked into, have been in the hundreds of thousands of pounds. Um, and in regards to Miami House, sort of links into what Hugh was asking earlier, there may be future plans in, what, in the future about decommissioning Miami House. Um, so even if Miami House is the front desk uh, and it's used as an interim service for the next five to ten years or so, it will cost the council 80000 to put that in place now. In regard to um, opening up a new shop, it will cost us hundreds and thousands of pounds to reopen up, uh, well, to say reopen, to open services in an alternative space. So even if we're just looking at being cost effective, this is the most cost effective use of our money. And there's nowhere more obvious than a building for residents to come to, than a big building that says Tamworth Borough Council alongside of it. One of the major problems we had with the TLC was, as an alternative provision for the front desk was that um, even though it, it was unsuitable, number one, but number two, people were unaware of it being there. As I say, it's no more obvious than a building that says Tamworth Borough Council alongside. That was a very thorough, um, yeah. Um, just quickly, Chair, um, Councillor Daniels has sent a statement. I don't know whether you wanted to read it or... Brilliant. Yes, um, I have a statement from Councillor Daniels who can't be here tonight, but she wanted to um, put her views on this. So thank you for allowing my words to be read out in support of a decision to reinstate face-to-face -face services at Marmion House, including a front desk reception. I'm writing on behalf of my parents, their neighbours, people we've spoken to on the doorstep and several members of staff at Tamworth Borough Council who say they want a front desk back. Staff tell me they feel they will be able to have more productive conversations with residents without a need to rush. While the assembly rooms may be in the town centre, staff feel the dedicated balancing act between being a box office, receptionist and staff member able to support vulnerable residents desperate to talk just is not working. Residents my parents' age say they struggle with online systems and would really appreciate face-to-face -face communication as their circumstances change. To name but a few requests, they would like letters explaining and a chance to see what services are out there. Our plans would allow this to happen. I appreciate this evidence is anecdotal. However, my fellow councillors and I have heard multiple points like this since the reception closed. Moreover, I feel it, it is at the heart of what we want to do as a council, be transparent about our work, serve all our communities and ensure all those who need help are helped. Thank you for that, Councillor Daniels. I think we now move to the recommendation. Oh, sorry, yeah. 
can I just make one comment? You know, <clears throat> as, as Labour councillors, you know, and we were elected <clears throat> on one of these this, on one of these issues. This was a, a pledge that we made to the people as we went around talking to to our co constituents. Yeah. So, um, it, and I think we deserve a lot of credit because we're actually going to deliver on something we've promised. Um, and that doesn't happen often, either in local government uh, or whatever, any sort of government. So I, I really think that this should, um, we should take some sort of credit for, for this because we're actually delivering on a promise we made to the people as we went around. And if they didn't want it, they, they could have voted against it. Uh, but they didn't. They voted for, for it. <clears throat> so I think we, you know, it, it's a point that we should bear in mind that this was a key pledge. These are two key pledges to, to make face-to-face -face communications um, uh, better for our residents. So that's a comment I'd make, really. Thanks for that. Um, and I think at this point we probably need to say thank you very much to all the officers who have run with this idea and have made it happen so quickly because it is breathtaking how we've got to this. It's really fabulous that we will soon be able to look at moving back into the council chamber at Marmion House, then having that conversation about what we do with this fabulous building and seeing how we can bring all that, that vision. There, there is a lot of work going on um, at the council around the vision for the town centre, and this, as a building, needs to be part of that vision and not just seen as somewhere that the councillors sit and have their meetings. So that's really good. But thank you, everyone, for, for all that you've done. Do I need to read out all the recommendations? Yes, I do. Right. <clears throat> Can I just ask... Um, the two recommendations that you want to make, Councillor Foster, are you able to repeat those at the end? When, yeah. yeah. No, no, just so that so we've got so we know exactly what we're voting on. That's yeah, yeah. all. Thank you. Thank you. So, it is recommended that the cabinet approve the following recommendations. Two one to reopen the reception area at Marmion House to provide face-to-face -face customer services which meets the needs of the whole community as follows. Monday, Wednesday, Friday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. 2.2. To approve the addition to the establishment for up to two years, 0.92 FTE customer experience assistant and a 0.6 FTE customer service officer funded from reserves. 2.3, to redesign the reception area to support the customer service offer, which will open within four months of cabinet approval. This is subject to contractors. 2.4, to review opening hours, usage and customer feedback on a weekly basis with a full review at six months. 2.5, to continue to develop the service to explore and incorporate co-location working with statutory partners, the voluntary sector and other community groups. 2.6, to continue to deliver the full customer services offer from the Tamworth Information Centre at the Assembly Rooms during their opening hours. 2.7, to relocate all council meetings to Marmion House upon completion of audio-visual technology installation and minor refurbishment of the council chamber. This is with the exception of civic ceremonies. 2.8, to approve the repurposing of capital funds identified for the Re recovery and reset and town hall improvement projects to fund refurbishments to the chamber and Marmion House reception. There she go. Yeah, so the point I made was for the sustainability in terms of the reopening of the uh, of the front uh, additional front door uh, in in terms of uh, negating that <coughs> negative impact uh, with um, some sort of div uh, minor design um, upgrade or amendment to to the the floor plan for the um, the new front desk. <coughs> I think the other point can, it was just a bit of background information, I think, regard, regarding how much more sustainable um, the um, Marmion House is compared to 
to the town hall. So I won't put. I think we can just leave that as said. But it would be nice to to understand what you know what what impact it has. You know what impact we're having because it's you know it's an ongoing thing for for the council. Like to have a mover. Sorry, can I just oh. clarify? Is you've asked whether um, they can look into it. We were saying they should should do it. Well, yeah, obviously, if it's going to cost you know massive amounts of money, then we'd have to live with it. But if there is a way that we can negate that um, uh, environmental impact. Mm -hmm. There, with you know, on the design or whatever, then I think we should have a look at it. Okay, so consider yeah. the options. Yeah, okay. yeah. consider the options. Yeah. It may well be that we've already got something in place, actually, because that would have always been an issue, wouldn't it, with that kind of doors? So, thank you. Hey, can I just, can I just check? Do we want that to come back to cabinet, or would you do? We could do that in consultation with the portfolio holder. If we could speak. I'll, I'll be happy for for it not to come back you know as long as it's consulted with the portfolio holder Thank that'd you. be fine so. <coughs> so do i have a mover and a seconder and all those in favor thank you so that is well i think it's really good news and i hope that the people out there who are watching will be equally pleased with the decision that we've made so thank you members that concludes the business of the meeting and i close the meeting at oh 6 30.